What was the worst D&D experience you had? Part 1. Mr. Ripper here. So okay, if you prefer me over Scott, hit the like and subscribe button so I can take my channel back. Probably the time the DM turned the entire party against me and I had to kill them all. So, a buddy of mine and I joined a meetup 3.5 group several years ago. Before joining we specifically asked if the DM was okay with min-maxers. He said he was fine with it, as we have run into problems with overpowering groups in the past. Anyways, this was a large group, probably 7 people in total. I was a cleric with the saint template and my buddy was a pretty badass wizard build. Soon after we joined we realized that the players and the DMs were not particularly on our level. The DM was reading from one of those official D&D campaign books or as I like to call them scripts. The other players were okay, just not min-maxers. Not wanting to let this get in our way, my friend and I decided to just hold back in our true power as to not overwhelm the other players and to just enjoy the RP and social aspect of the game. Apparently, we did not hold back enough, as the DM got really frustrated with how easily our party was mowing through his scripted campaign. He would complain all the time, my friend and I offered him ideas as to how to make the fights more challenging. But the DM refused for whatever reason. Until one day, the DM did decide to go off the script. The DM introduced a god. That's right a god. And this said god apparently warned the rest of the group that my actions as good intended as they were would lead to the whole group's destruction and that they should get rid of me. This god used his plus 40 diplomacy check on us mid-level team and of course everyone failed their check and now believed wholeheartedly that it was for the greater good that I should die. Uh oh. My friend and I just looked at each other a little in shock understanding that the DM was trying to just kill my character forcing me to make another. He looked at me and gave me a knowing nod. I asked the DM if he was sure he wanted to do this. He was sure. I went like 3rd or 4th in the initiative order, no one was able to hit my AC and made a save. Thankfully I went before my friend, because he would have found a way to kill me. My turn. No more holding back. I cast a chain stop heart spell, starting with my friend. It was able to kill my friend and three others in that one turn. At that point there was much debate as to how I was able to do that, as I have been holding back big time. After about 10 minutes of arguing and looking up the rules, everyone finally admitted that everything I did was legal. The battle proceeded. The remaining three tried again, I think one hit me, but only for a little damage. My turn again. Just to mix things up, I then cast a chain rack spell. Two of them failed, falling helpless to the ground with blood draining from their orifices screaming in pain. The last one, made a save to come to his senses and decided to run away in fear. I cast with a limb on him. I then proceeded to take my time in putting a mace to the two helpless players cootie gracing them as the last player was trying to slowly crawl away. I cast stop heart on him as well. He failed the save. My friend then began laughing hysterically. I just shrugged. The DM was super pissed and so were the other players. My friend and I stood up in unison, realizing that this was not the game for us. Wanting to stay in character, I told the DM that I chained all the corpses up took all their gear and would sell it all to buy 5 potions of resurrection and give it to the players, as I was good after all. I could tell all the other players and DM was relieved. With that I just said it's been fun and my friend and I left and never came back. Now I've been in lots of games where the DM struggled to be a decent DM. But for the DM to go out of his way to single me out to kill me, rather than politely ask me to make another character because he was out of his league. Pretty borderless. A guy got transferred to our high school when I was in my junior year. He was, I will not lie, someone I thought to be a complete imbecile. Still do. In fact, he was your classic high school bully. Lied about everything, boasted about everything, insulted me constantly, made me the butt of every joke he could, attacked me twice, and was an all-around unlikable fellow. But, he played D&D. At a time when few people in my circle of friends still played, or even discussed nerdy topics. So, what few friends I had in class who were still into D&D, and I, welcomed him into the group. Where he, of course, made buddies, for a time, with the other guy that used to bully me inside the group. I should take a side note right here to explain the obvious. 
I was a shy, socially awkward, fat kid, with nerdy tastes and nothing in the way of coolness, back in high school. Think of your everyday stereotype of the nerd kid, the fat kid, and the awkward kid all combined into one glorious mess. Safe to say, I was bullied constantly throughout high school, and to add insult to injury I was even bullied by a guy within my own gaming group. Anyway, the particulars of the dark parts of my adolescence aside, this ties into my worst D&D experience. How? Well, so glad you asked. See, this new kid had been an active D&D player in his old high school. He still remained friends with his old DM. They would meet together constantly to play. In fact, the other guy who bullied me within the group and they made good friends and started playing on their own. The three of them. So, one day, and after DND had kind of died down with the group due to many different circumstances, not the least of which the fact that these guys had established their own group on the side, with just the three of them, they decided to call me up to join their group. I had long been the DM in our own group, and with sessions having died down so much for a while, I was eager at the chance to play for a bit. So I overlooked who it was that had called, and all the other warnings going on in my head, and when the chance of playing with them one Saturday night was presented, I jumped on the opportunity. Yeah, going to a game with a guy you don't know and your two high school bullies. Freaking genius, I know. Rest assured, I am no longer as naive, or as much of a pushover as I was as a teen. In any case, we meet up. They introduce me to this old school friend of Bullion 1, and he explains to me that they are in the middle of a campaign through the Underdark. I should then make myself a level 9 character and join in. I asked if my character could be anything, and I was told there were no restrictions. So, being my first time as a player in a long time, I decided to try something quirky, and made a halfling warrior. A captured slave, trained as a weird form of gladiatorial entertainment in some arena in the Underdark learned in the art of swordplay, later having escaped and turned mercenary and hero of the deep. The two guys gave me a ton of shit over playing a hobbit fighter, claiming hobbits couldn't be fighters. That it made no sense. But the DM had a private conversation with them. This made them back down and they allowed my character without much more fuss. So, with that settled, we got into the game. The adventure itself was pretty standard. Just, the PCs being part of a caravan traveling through the Underdark from point A, to point B, fending off attacks along the way. At many points some NPCs would meet with us, and comment on the out of place halfling in the party, but, oddly enough, the other PCs would come to my aid and side with my halfling fighter's place in the caravan. I was pleasantly surprised by their change of heart towards my character, I gotta tell you. That is, until halfway through the night. At the middle point of the adventure we reached point B, and we were introduced to the NPCs that were expecting us. That is when the other PCs started introducing themselves on behalf of their patron, and me, as their patron's offering. Suddenly, my character gets jumped by slaves and guards. The DM allows me no actions. They bound my character, placed him in a cage, and, long story short, after about 20 minutes of me being not allowed any actions, and my character being tortured before the onlooking PCs, he gets sacrificed to some dark god. That's when the guys explain to me that they didn't really want me to play. They just needed someone to play the part of the character being taken as an offering from NPC A to NPC B, and that I had played my part so now I could just go away and let them finish the story. Sadly, without the muscle mass, the height, or the training to knock their teeth in, all I could do was just pick up my things, tell them to go and fuck themselves, and walk out to the sound of them laughing their hearts out. To my memory, that was the last time we played together. We graduated soon after, and I am happy to say I have seen, almost, nothing of them in many years. Worst experience I have ever had in DND, by far. Back in my first real job I met a new colleague who sat in the next cube. We got along well from the start, and when we discovered we were both gamers, that was pretty exciting. He attended college locally, and so his college gaming group was in the area. I started to game with them, which was fun. As an existing gaming group, there are a few personalities about whom I should probably say a few words. Glenn, my colleague who introduced me to the group. Quite often a GM not a player. 
When he was a player, he tended to exercise outsized influence due to often being the GM, but also pretty charismatic. Glenn is the single best GM that I've played with. Creative, excellent ability to anticipate and strategize. Colin. Nice guy, reasonably bright, always got along well with him. Colin was going to run a campaign for D&D. This was in the second edition days. It wasn't a rule or set I liked much, but I figured, what the heck. Session 1. We all show up, go through the obligatory PC introductions, and finally get the story underway. I'm already a little leery because the wizard PC was allowed to start to play with a pseudo dragon familiar. But that player is pretty persuasive, he's a lawyer, so okay, whatever. We stumble into the plot, and as we set out on the quest to help the people of this small, farming community around Harvest, Glenn asks Colin, hey, there should be tons of hay. Can we get a cart of hay from the people who are giving us gold pieces to go on this quest? Without missing a beat, Colin replies, no. Everyone looks around at one another, and Glenn's a bit annoyed but curious. Okay, but you already told us it's a farming community. They clearly can afford to pay us. And it's harvest, so there should be plenty of hay. Can we just pay for a cart and gather up some hay? No. Is there hay or a cart? Yes. So what's the problem? Colin kept stonewalling until finally he admits that he doesn't know what use the cart and hay will go to, and he's afraid that if he allows it, he'll lose control of the group because he knows he won't be able to anticipate how, but it's gonna get set on fire and wreck his plot. I look at Glenn. The look on his face is a weird mixture of amusement and yet, strange appreciation that his ability to outthink the GM has inspired such an overreaction. My involvement in that campaign didn't last long, mainly because my responsibilities changed and prevented my joining the group, but I'm not sure how much I would have fought to remain in it after that event.